Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fillah in general I get several questions about those uh, seeking polygamous relationships and also really the advice for that for, for one seeking polygamy or polygyny is not so <clears throat> different from the one who's just seeking a spouse in general except there's another dimension that the polygamous individual needs to consider. Aside from the many uh, challenges with having more than one family, a, a big challenge for the ones who are established that they, with established families, meaning they have family with children or whatever the case may be, is you have to consider very much a couple of things. And the biggest thing that I would say is how it's going to affect your first family. Some women do not have the, the will, the desire, and perhaps they are overwhelmed by jealousy and they just cannot accept uh, that kind of relationship. So that's one thing to have an idea about is to know your spouse, to know are they a person who can even handle it. Some women literally might go uh, lose a bit of their sanity or they may, <clears throat> because of jealousy or what have you, or sometimes arrogance, there's are many reasons, or perhaps they are violent women. This is also the case scenario. I've seen, I've known many cases, many cases where women have thrown boiling water on their husbands, when women have tried to cut their husbands, when women have done all kinds of things in order to uh, deal with, uh, in order to deal with their husbands. And so it's very important to know the temperament of your spouse. So I would say number one is know how this, have an idea about how it will affect your first family. If you're able to discuss those issues and hopefully sit at the table, hopefully she is a, a person who is uh, uh, rational and, and who can also uh, rein in her emotions, that you'll be able to talk and discuss those issues because it's not an easy subject. However, there are those women who are completely accepting and who search for uh, wives, additional wives for their husbands. And I've known personally many cases like this as well. I've known sisters who literally go and look for good, suitable women, will approach other sisters that they like, that they feel are compatible to be a co-wife, if you will. So it depends on the temperament. The, another piece of advice, aside from knowing your spouse and knowing having an idea about how it's going to affect them and your children, if there are children involved, you have to realize that you are no longer, uh, there's a bit of an element that can feel like homelessness, <clears throat> that a person can, you know, you don't really have a home if you're sleeping here one night and you're sleeping there one night, it depends on the distance, unless it's a distance relationship, you have one, another wife in another country, whatever the scenario is, all of those things you need to consider about giving everyone their rights, but also even the feeling, some men like their home and they like to feel at home. But I believe that a person who is in a polygamous situation, they may not have that sense they may have a sense of homelessness that you're sleeping here, you're sleeping there another night and you have to alternate or whatever the case may be. And various brothers I've known over the years who practice polygamy have told me about different ways that they uh, deal with that. Some brothers, they have, they have agreements, their families have agreements that with one wife, he spends three days and then the next one, it's, she gets her three days and it goes like this or something to, have, to help break up that sense of feeling. Another stemming from that is also the case if there are children the children especially the young children they don't always have that sense of understanding that their father uh has another family you know so that's a hard thing your little girl your little boy your whatever your children they're wanting they're like hey baba abu whatever abby why are you you know, why are you going to that house with that woman? Why are you doing this? Why are you, you know, they don't understand. They can't process. They just want their father. So that's another thing to reflect upon in a polygamous scenario, polygamous situation. Um, some brothers, rare scenarios, but I do know some brothers who have 
two wives in one dwelling. They actually live in the same uh, apartment even, okay? And that is a rare scenario and rare, rarely is it success, successful, but I do know some individuals who have been pretty successful and have some years with more than one family in a common, uh, uh, a common dwelling. And that is a whole nother level and a level uh, that's quite challenging. Um, but if it works for one family, then that's, or, you know, for those it works for, alhamdulillah, it works for them. And so those are some other things to consider when being in these types of scenarios. A last piece of advice or something to be aware of when seeking out polygamy or uh, getting married in general, and this, this applies to all those scenarios, is you want to look for those signs before you marry, meaning be aware. We know countless, countless scenarios where uh, before marriage took place, there were clear signs. There were clear signs the brother was violent. There were clear signs that the sister was a little bit mentally uh, challenged. There were clear signs that the brother was mentally challenged. There were clear signs that there was, uh, <clears throat> you know, all kind of alarm bells, so to speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given some insight or that there was incompatibility. This brother was educated. This sister was from the street, from the gang culture. Well, I don't know how successful they're going to be unless they're really both trying to go in the right direct, the same direction. And a lot of times those scenarios don't work. You know, the prince charming, the prince uh, that is in, in shining armor, he could be in black shining armor, he could be in white shining armor, I don't have a problem with the color of the armor. And uh, he, he, you know, he comes and he rescues the fair maiden who was, uh, who was, you know, in distress because she lived such a tough life and now she wants to change. Well, when you want to step into a scenario like that, that is a very dangerous mentality. And that's a very common mentality amongst men, Muslim and non-Muslim, in that they believe that they're going to be the savior. They're going to save this damsel in distress. She's not going to be a prostitute anymore. She was beautiful. And I'm going to bring her to Islam and to goodness. She's not going to be, you know, with all that baggage. I'm going to save her. You know, perhaps even some sisters share a common thing like this or the sisters who want to tablik the non-Muslim man who's in at her job and think that he's going to be a man of the sunnah. Well, a lot of times that fails and it ends up in a disaster, especially when there are children. And sometimes we've known scenarios where women have left the dean as well as the man. Both left the dean. Sisters. I, we know a particular sister. She, uh, you know, one particular incident where a sister who was born Muslim, she does her tablik, she, you know, advises. In fact, I know a few scenarios like this, but one particular one, advising uh, or, or, you know, giving dawah because she liked this guy, she liked his style, this and that and the other. He becomes Muslim for a good couple months, maybe. And they have a child. She leaves the dean eventually. He, he left the dean. He left the dean first and she goes, she followed. And so... These are dangerous uh, scenarios, so these are all things to consider. So my point is, before going into any marriage, and especially the polygamous one, pay attention to the signs. Sometimes you can see, especially when it comes to the polemic, polygamous scenario, you can see that a new wife, a new potential wife, maybe she's already showing signs of jealousy and, oh, and showing signs of possessiveness. You need to pay attention to that. Those are signs that you need to be very frank with her. So I think it's very important to be honest. We don't want to be honest. Everybody wants to put on their, before marriage, put on their best suit and tie, their best thobe and chamis, their best abaya and, and niqab. But after that, then their real personality and their real selves come, come to light. So it's very important to be honest and look for honesty and look for those traits that could be potentially dangerous. If you see jealousy already, and you haven't even married, you're just talking to this person for, for potential marriage, or you see possessiveness, or you see mental illness, or you see whatever, you need to pay attention to that because that could be your destruction, the destruction of your homes, both homes, and even yourself. So those are just some things to be aware of that we have to consider in light of polygamy and in light of marriage in general. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be a source of good, not a source of evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.